Fish on. Fish on the Trigger Spoon Junior. 10 feet deep. Fish doesn't feel huge, but I don't know that he really knows he's hooked yet. I was only going 1.3 when he hit because I was messing around with those flies. So still a ways away. I have a 50 foot top shot on this one and uh, just coming to the, the junction. Yeah, there we go. I'm into the top shot. So that fish is back about 50. Uh, just a little guy. A brown trout. Thanks. Yeah. Right there. All right. Nice little brown. That's cool. Terrific little brown on the, on the orange Trigger Spoon Junior. Dandy. Hey guys, Cal Kellogg here. Coming to you again from the beautiful Sierra foothills. It's gonna be an awesome day. Anyway, Let's um, start out with some kind of general observations about the trip I just got back from. Um, Wes Ward and I, we spent two days uh, fishing a lake up in the Northern um, Sierras. It's a shallow pan style reservoir. Um, that is full of weeds and it's full of aquatic insects. And we had a couple, couple kind of odd things happen and, and uh, just notable, notable things happen on the trip. First, we both had lion issues, which is kind of odd because, you know, we are, we are very religious about checking our line, making sure our line is in good working order, making sure it's fresh. Um, Wes ended up losing a fish that snapped his leader, which is very rare for us. And we almost never lose a fish to broken line. But that happened to Wes, and then I was kind of randomly trolling along, and I had out maybe a hundred feet of line. I'm looking at the line in my rod, and it looked a little funny. I thought, does it have some water on it or a spider web or something? I touched it, and I had, I don't know, 10 inches of line that was just absolutely frayed. And uh, that didn't cost me. I was just lucky it was right in front of me when, when I saw it because later on in the day, I got some just, just horrendous strikes that would have snapped the line. But I caught it, I backed my drag off for a little while and then as soon as I went to shore for lunch, I stripped that line off and got back to some reliable lines. So anyway, line issues, they're fairly rare for us, but uh, it happened and uh, cost Wes, it didn't cost me. So attention to details, guys, attention to details. Keep that line fresh, check your knots, all that kind of stuff that's gonna help you land extra fish. Um, and speaking of landing fish, it's, uh, it, it always strikes me that fishing kind of comes back to baseball in a way. Um, you might go on a hot streak when you're hitting and uh, you know, you're hitting 600 for the week. But then you're gonna get in a slump and, and you're gonna bat 100 for the week and your batting average is gonna be pretty consistent. You're always gonna come back to your batting average. You're gonna get in slumps, you're gonna get in hot streaks, but at the end of the day, you're gonna fall back to whatever your true batting average is. So as this applies to trout fishing, day one at, uh, at the lake, I, you know, I was catching some fish, I was losing some fish, um, I was landing more than I was losing, but I was losing some fish. And Wes comes by and he's like, oh man, I, I've landed 20 some trout and I've only lost one. And uh, I was like, wow, that's cool, right on. So the next morning we're out there and we kind of cross paths and I'm like, how are you doing? He's like, I've lost five fish in a row. <laughs> so I thought, well, uh, you're coming back to that batting average, man. You can't fight statistics. One day he couldn't do anything wrong. The next morning, um, he loses five fish in a row. So go figure, you're always gonna come back to that average number. Now, let's get on with the colors. Um, this was, it was a, a very stark illustration of one of my cornerstone beliefs about trout fishing. You guys have heard this a bunch if, you, if, you, if you're a regular viewer of, this, of the channel. If you're at a bait fish lake, go with bait fish colored lures. Match the hatch, okay? But if you're at a lake where the predominant forage item is insects, it's tough for a troller to match that hatch. They're little tiny bugs. So it's a completely different philosophy. You gotta go bright, you gotta go bold, and you gotta draw those curiosity strikes. And you just gotta know going in that you are only gonna catch the fish that make a mistake. The fish are dialed in on feeding on insects and uh, the fish that you're gonna catch are the fish that you can trigger, you know, 
to, to a, a bad decision in, so to speak. You're gonna, you're gonna show them something that makes them make a bad decision and all of a sudden it's fish on. And that's exactly what we saw on our last trip. Um, the fish were feeding on some kind of large midges. Um, the hatch was getting started right around daybreak and it would extend until 10, 11 o'clock in the morning and you'd see these big beautiful rainbows up on the surface feeding on those midges and you could not catch those fish. The fish that you could catch were holding deeper. I don't think they were quite as active as the fish up on the surface, but they were very willing to strike provided you showed them the right thing. Now, I trolled this lure right here, a hammered gold Trigger Spoon Junior for quite a while, and I could not get hit on this they would not hit metallic colored lures. I tried a bunch of different metallic colored stuff, they would not hit it. For me, now I was trolling flies, orange flies and pink flies, and I was trolling Trigger Spoon Juniors predominantly in pink like that or orange with the chrome back. And the reason I was, I was going with the Trigger Spoon Junior is they work great at 1.8 and that's the speed my flies were working well at. And for me, when I'm in the Northern Sierras, when I'm at a lake like that, my big fish offering is typically a fly. And I did end up catching my big fish on an orange fly. Although I didn't catch a ton of fish on the fly. I caught three or four fish on the fly the whole time I was there, but they were all big. But most of my fish came on the Trigger Spoon Junior, but that's a speed thing, pink and orange. The other colors were not working for me. Now, Wes, Wes is, I, I'm really proud of, of Wes's progression as a trout angler. He's starting to develop his own style. Um, we're running the same baits, our tackle boxes are pretty much the same, but he's utilizing his stuff in slightly different ways than I am. He's building confidence and he's establishing his own style of fishing. He was trolling faster than me and this is what he was using and he was having exceptional results on the full size, the trigger spoon, the pink one, that was number one for him, and the orange one. But he was trolling two, 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 three, two, four with the full, full size lure. I just hooked myself in the finger, that, that hurt. Uh, anyway, he was trolling a little bit faster than me, which was the perfect speed range for the full size trigger spoon, and he was putting a whooping on him. Um, 15 feet deep, that was the key for him with the pink trigger, the orange trigger. And of course we mixed in some mag lips and stuff like that. But uh, by far the spoon bite is you know what was happening and you had to have those bright colors, the pinks, the oranges. We tried black, we caught a few fish on black. Um, and like I said, we tried the metallics and it was a no-go on the metallic colors. The coppers, gold, silver, they wanted no part of that. So anyway, that was the two days for us. Um, bright colored lures, aggressive trolling, just trying to make you know a certain percentage of the fish make a bad decision and they ended up on the end of our line. And I think in total, we brought about 60 trout to the kayaks in that one to three pound range. Lots of fish in that 16 to 18 inch you know, category that were two and a half to three pounds. Um, lots of, you know, hard dives, head shaking, jumping, all that kind of stuff.